All right, today's another video where I'm just gonna be spending time with my new Scout Epoch and Dirty 30. As well, I'm gonna show you some of my antique targets, including two that are each worth roughly twice what a whole Scout package will cost you. Although we won't be going through my whole $20,000 antique target collection, I'm gonna show you a few of the best. As well, we're gonna knock the crap out of a bunch of stuff with a Dirty 30, traveling at 890 feet per second for a total of this many foot-pounds. And along the way, I'll tell you a few fun and interesting facts about the Scout Epoch as far as the operation and all that. But right now, let's get this party started with some shooting. Since I just put in my new regulator, I turned my gun down from 1,023 feet per second. And right here, you can see I'm at 904. And I got it till it was shooting exactly 891 feet per second. Over and over. When you're tuning the Epoch, you want to leave your low pressure wheel alone and just tune your velocity with your HP wheel right there. Once you get it in the ballpark, you can make fine adjustments to get the exact FPS that you want. For my 30 caliber, it's recommended to have my low pressure regulator set at 150. To achieve 890 feet per second with the 44 grain and the short barrel, my high pressure regulator was right about 1400. Check out this noise, you guys. I went ahead and got my tripod and my weight on there. Look at that, I got my gun completely level. Super sweet. And then I can just swivel it from here, it'll stay level. I'm loving this. Right here I'm using my badass tripod for the first time and shooting from a bag. We'll get a closer look at this tripod later on in this video. It's extremely awesome. This right here is 66 yards away shooting the JSP 44.75 grain. I was already popping these one inch targets right here when I was tuning the gun, so I know this isn't gonna be a problem at all. After getting sighted in for 66 yards, here's an official group. Yeah, let's do official 66 yard group. Now this is just from the bag, so it's not gonna be as accurate. Oh, darn it. I wonder if that was me. Could have been. Dang. Let's do one more. <laughs> Five in the hole and one outside. Could have been me. Loving it. All right, these, obviously these eggs are dead. Let me just take out any random targets sitting around. They're already missing his head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Get that way that easy, buddy. Obliterated that guy. Wow. Scrambled eggs. Wow. I'm just shooting like with one hand. Oh man, that was so cool. I don't think I've ever hit an egg right in the middle with the dirty 30. Oh man, vaporization. Hit it right at the bottom. That's good. Hit this guy right at the top. 
I'm gonna do a couple center mass. Tempted to hit that off the top. Oh, look at that. And we have a coin sitting right there. Basically a silver dollar size token. Oh man, obliterated. Oh man. My scout fit in the case with the scope and the weight on there. And that little thing in the bag right there is my tripod. Right now let's take a close up look at this awesome tripod. If there was one accessory I would say to get with your scout, it would be the rail, which I'm also going to give you a look at in this video, how it goes together, and this tripod. It makes it so easy to handle your gun and just, you know, set it down, work on it. Your gun will thank you. This tripod will fit any arc or rail, so you can throw this on your M3 or whatever you want, as long as you have an arc or rail. You can find this tripod and other scout accessories at pyramidair.com. There will be a link in the description. This right here is so precise that you barely, you just loosen it like that. And you can slide it back and forth. And then you just barely tighten it. It's either loose or it's tight. That's it. These things, you just pop them up and it'll allow you to click them into place. This big knob right here is going to control this, which as you can see goes all different directions. You can even fold your bipod up and leave it up out of the way. So this would allow me to go like this with my gun. Anything you want to do. So if we look back here, there is actually a level right there. So as a shooter, I can just level that up. Then when it's level, boom, tighten that thing and it's set. Hold it right on my bag just like that. So if this is loose, I'm able to rotate this. But then this last knob right here is to go ahead and I'll just show you right here. Let's lock that in position. So now this won't turn. And then if I lock this one, then that's all locked in there now. The tripod has three levels on it, but two main levels. So you can level your gun both ways when you're shooting. Here's a look at those legs. The legs can be extended from between 6 to, I believe, 18 inches. As well, you can click them in any one of a few different positions, from flat to straight down. Meow, let's get back to some 30 caliber carnage, shooting the 44.75 grain JSBs out my window sniper style at a very special. 47 yards away, close enough. This right here is one of the first targets I made when I learned how to weld. And it is pretty awesome. The only problem with it is that it probably weighs 150 pounds. Although it has a handle and wheels welded on, it was actually just a proof of concept. And I ended up making the same thing much smaller. It's called the Punisher. These will be for sale, but not cheap. A unit like this would cost you about $899. But it will last forever. Longer than you or me. If you want to see more about the smaller version of this target, I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of this video to my quick clip showing the Punisher prototype. Powering on. Welcome to the epic experience. 12 power magnification. I was on 16 and I was shooting a 60 yard. All right, let's just see where we hit. Fire timer on. you see that? I just randomly like clicked up and then it hit exactly pellet on bullseye. You might be close enough to get through that hole. Perfect. All right, let me go switch my camera out. 
So the object is to shoot through this about nickel size hole and hit the paddle in back of the star without knocking the star down. And then when you're ready to reset the target, you just hit this button from at least 150 yards away, probably farther, and it will reset on its own wirelessly. That was so cool looking. Wow, right through the hole. Oh, it's amazing. Just straight swishes it. Oh man, I oh I shot too fast. Oh, that was totally me. I was not taking my time. I can't believe it. Oh, let me press the button. I gotta do the whole thing again. Oh, technically. Oh, fuck. Slipped on the trigger. Damn it. Maybe. It's about like nickel size holes, I'd say. That was definitely a lot of fun. And as you saw, it took a little bit of skill. This is such a nice gun. It's awesome to shoot, but it's just like, it's awesome just to be around it. I'm telling you, I love it. And I've seen a lot of air guns, you guys. Meow, I'm gonna give you a quick look at how I installed my Arca rail. By the way, here's that weight. And I'll give you the stats on that in the next video. It's heavy though. And like everything else from Scout Air Guns, the Arca rail is beautifully machined, beautifully finished, and even has a little laser etching on there. So we have standard m -lock rails running along the side of the Epoch. And on the Arca rail, there's a little piece that sticks out. And that's going to fit right in the middle. That's why when your sprues are out, it still won't slide out. You actually have to separate it into two pieces to get it on and off the gun. It comes with these little M-lock screws. This is one of the few times I've ever used an M-lock rail. So the easiest way is to put the screws in first, then thread them on a little bit, line them up, and then just try to carefully put it through the slot. And hopefully turning the screw clockwise will grab it underneath, and you'll be able to tighten it. If you need to, you can put something in there to kind of hold the bottom piece. That's what I did here with a zip tie. The screws and threads that hold the M lock on at the top are different. There's beefier screws that connect the bottom piece together. But you just put it on in two pieces, tighten it up, and you're ready to rock and roll. And mine went together fine, it tightened right up. And just like that, I was ready to rock and roll. My Scout Epoch was looking good and feeling fine. All I could think of to do next was some target annihilation at a very special. 34 yards away. Welcome to the epic experience. Fire timer on. I have to come down a teeny bit. Bullet impact down. Two clicks. We'll go back to this guy. All right, that's it, buddy. That's how easy it is to sight the sucker in. This is still at 34 yards away, and we're about to dispense justice with extreme precision. Holy crap, you guys, check this out. The skirt of that bullet ended up in homegirl's hair right here. All right, everybody's looking fly. Fire timer on. Cowboy sounds, that's what we're after on this little segment. Coins do it every time. Boy, we could probably tell what coin it is by uh, the sound. This is a quarter right here. 
That was a dangerous shot, but I made it. Just gonna get a little bit of a haircut. Trust me, she's okay though. Oh, brother, now I gotta shoot past her foot? Hold on. We'll definitely be doing this again, this is fun. side here. Boy, direct hits every time. I've actually been collecting these cast iron antique targets for years. The way I would find them is I would check eBay every single day. Literally every day for like five years. Until I got to the point where I pretty much bought everything that existed. There's probably a few out there I don't have, but I got 90% of them. I don't have to build my own shooting gallery. Or reproduce one, that was my actual plan. Most of the targets I buy go for between two and 500. This eagle right here though, these go for about $3,500. It's like a half inch thick. These used to be on the side of the shooting gallery in the old days. But this lion and tiger, they're about 15 inches long. And I originally thought they were not used at all, but looking at them just now, I see that there are some bullet strikes on there. But these are still in excellent shape. A lot of these that I've seen have just been shot flat, but this one has all the details, all the muscles and the fur and everything. Really great pieces. So you don't see these really for sale. I would say the value on these is $5,000 each. I know that if I was offered 5,000 each for them, I would not sell them. But I found these in the WF Mangles catalog from like 1930 or something. So let me read you the description. This is a whole shooting gallery that you used to be able to buy. It's on page 22 of the WF Mangles Company Carousel Works, Coney Island, New York catalog. It's 9 feet by 12 feet, made of steel plate riveted to angle iron frame. The foreground has 12 targets with loud steel gongs. Ducks with moving wings swim along. When hit, they tip over. To the right is a revolving disc with little stars which tip over when hit. The cast iron bird sit on racks and when hit they drop into steel pockets that make a racket. Squirrels climb up the tree in a great hurry. When hit they flip over but erect themselves as they come up again. And then this is the part that pertains to me. A large lion and tiger jump over the mountain in a realistic manner. One main driving pulley sets all the objects in motion. Completely ready for a one-half horsepower motor. Price without motor, 280 bucks. Great deal. Alright, guys and gals. That's it for me on this one. We've got a lot more coming at you with the Scout Epic, actually. I think it's pronounced Epic. But we'll get to the bottom of that and a lot of other things in future videos. So, till next week. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.